Hello and welcome again to Phi TV. I'm your host, Brad Swanson. We are coming to you just a few blocks from Florida's capital, and we're here with Peter Schorsch, editor, founder of FloridaPolitics.com. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. In studio. Yeah, well, thank you. You're our, our, uh, our, one of our preeminent guests, so uh, we're, we're, we're glad to have you on the new set. So let's talk, let's jump right into the campaigns. Yeah. We are ferociously like following everything. Stuff's right. breaking. We're, we're two weeks away. Let's start with the Senate race. Um, you know, everyone knew Governor Scott. Uh, had resources, but uh, where's the fundraising for Scott? And then let's look at Nelson. What, how, how is he doing? Rick Scott impressed everyone. He posted earlier this week that he raised $10.7 million um, outside of his own money. He's been known for writing his own checks, but over the last three months, he set the record for any Senate candidate. Mm -hmm. um, $10.7 million, a lot more than Bill Nelson's got on top of whatever is in Rick Scott's checkbook. We know that the National Democrats have reserved a lot of time for Bill Nelson. Mm -hmm. It's a question of whether or not they're gonna actually come through with the check. It's kind of like layaway. And so are they gonna be there on Christmas to buy that jewelry or not? Um, the polling right now is still tight. It's been anywhere from Scott up by five to Bill Nelson up by a point or two. So let's just call it even and say it's a, a deadlocked race right now. So, so, so the national people in DC are looking at Bill Nelson as jewelry. <laughs> I don't think anybody's actually said that. I probably shouldn't use that metaphor. But if you think about it, it's, it's a question of resources. Mm -hmm. um, the, the Senate Democrats have a lot of seats to defend throughout the country. Florida is an expensive media market, as everybody who's watching this show knows. Mm -hmm. Do they want to protect Claire McCaskill in Missouri, which is a lot cheaper to do than Bill Nelson in Florida? Do they want to go after Dean Heller in Nevada compared to going after Rick Scott here? Right, so right. in a finite world where there's maybe 100 or $200 million to spread around a dozen Senate races and the balance of the Senate in, uh, up for grabs, Bill Nelson may, um, he may be on his own come October, November. Interesting, interesting. All right, let's go to the big race for Florida, right. which obviously is the governor's race. Um, you just recently wrote a very controversial piece. We're not even out of the primaries yet, yet you kind of picked two horses for people to kind of chew on as, as the winners. Yeah, you know, I keep looking at the trends right now and I feel like uh, Democrats- Tell us about the piece. It's, it's, it's the coming election between um, Andrew Gillum versus Ron DeSantis. And I, the more I see the activism on both sides, progressive Democrats are gonna go way left and conservatives are gonna go way right. And that means Gillum, who's probably the most cons uh, progressive candidate on the Democratic side of five people running, and clearly Ron DeSantis, he is a, a Trumper through and through. He is Mr. MAGA. He's got the president's endorsement. Um, and so I see these bases just you know veering from each other. Um, I think one of the things, the dynamic that's happening on the Democratic field is Jeff Green gets in, billionaire Jeff Green, he can write a check and buy this TV studio uh, well, and, this as, a run, one, but, <laughs> as a rounding air. Um, I think he's gonna take votes from Phil Levine out of Miami Beach, and so is Chris King. Um, he's coming up a little bit, and those three guys are taking votes from Gwen Graham. And so it is, on the left-hand side, going to be a matter of identity politics. Can Andrew Gillum get more African-American votes out than Gwen Graham can get out female votes? So I think right now that's the race on the Democratic side. The polling I've heard about and seen some snapshots of on the Republican side does not bode well for Adam Putnam. Front runner by any, any measure in terms of fundraising or grassroots or um, organization. I've heard of a poll in a specific congressional district last night that has him down something like 17 points. I think since the endorsement by the president, since the Fox, Fox News debate, Ron DeSantis has got uh, Adam Putnam on the run. This week, he got the full support of the Koch brothers. So on the right-hand side, it seems like DeSantis is peaking at the right time. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, so we'll move on from the governor's race. So let's talk about some poll numbers outside of that race. Sure. I mean, let, let's, let's, let's just keep going down the ticket. I mean, how, what are we looking at in the AG's race? What are you seeing in the attorney general's race? And, and what a great ticket. It's like, it's like uh, uh, WrestleMania where just, you know, the opening match is just as much fun as uh, Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant. Um, attorney general's race, you've got a competitive Republican primary between Pensacola's Frank White and Tampa's Ashley Moody, who is a circuit court judge. Ashley Moody has been leading the race up until this point. Really, not a lot of people have been tuning in. Undecided's actually been really winning it. Uh, Frank White went up on TV with a million, two million dollars worth of television ads. 
We have some new polling out this week that shows Frank White has opened up about a seven or eight point lead over Ashley Moody. So the question now for Ashley Moody is, when are you gonna go up on TV? Because if you don't get up there soon, with early balloting starting at the end of July, she may never be able to catch up. Yeah, well, that, I mean, so, so that's the real trick, right, is buy your cable, buy your broadcast, buy your broadcast through cable, and that's the answer to victory, right? It, it is, you know, one of the things that you're gonna see is you can only get so much money through the pipeline. You know, there's only one Fox News, mm -hmm. although I think Fox News would like to just duplicate itself so it could sell twice as much ads right now. There's only one MSNBC. There's only one Home and Garden channel. And so there's some, you know, only so many pipelines for um, uh, media buyers to reach you know, candidates. Otherwise, you, know, you, you get on broadcast television and that's, you're, you're communicating to people that won't even be up at the polls. If you wanna communicate with likely Republican voters, you want to be there at, you know, when uh, Sean Hannity's on. Right. All right. So, so let's go to a race that we, we in the bubble, as we say, we follow closely. But is sure. anyone paying attention to the Agriculture Commission race? What are you seeing in that race? All right. No, no one's paying attention <laughs> to it. And it's unfortunate in a way because, remember, the Agriculture Commissioner is, you know, one of four people on the cabinet. So they get to vote on a whole ton of things from conservation projects to the restoration of felons. Uh, voting rights. Um, also, agriculture is such a huge issue in Florida. You know, I always look at the satellite photos of Florida at night, and you see the lights, you know, Miami Beach along I-4, but the rest of the state is black because it's it's agriculture. It is citrus. It is cattle. Uh, it's strawberries down in Plant City. And the Agriculture Commissioner, especially now with uh, citrus having just a terrible run, is a more important job than it's ever been. Concealed weapons, another big issue that's been in the uh, press lately. That's controlled and administered by um, uh, the Agriculture Commissioner. Nobody's paying attention right now. Right now, it's a race between four people on the Republican side. Uh, Baxter Troutman is somebody, I think he's gonna open up his checkbook and try and uh, flood just like Frank White in the Attorney General's race. Um, look out for Nikki Freed on the Democratic side. She was a lobbyist. People thought she was kind of crazy to jump into this race. Um, I believe, and we haven't seen it yet, but I think she's backed by a lot of the medical marijuana interests that are starting to take hold in uh, Florida. If she can get their money uh, in this kind of cycle of the woman, she might be able to beat a, a more, uh, a better known Republican. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see a, a young Democrat on the cabinet as the agriculture commissioner. Yeah, that, that's gonna be an interesting race. I mean, you got a three way, it's always anybody's race when you inject more than, you know, yes. two candidates in. So that's, that's fascinating. Okay, so let's, let's, let's talk about ad buys, right? Sure. I mean, you, the, the candidates have a tough time getting on because they're competing with the bigger ad buys. Right. But, but uh, you were telling me before we, we, we shot this a little bit about Marcy's Law, their ad buy. How is that affecting the game plan? How big was that? What's it look like? All right, so Marcy's Law is one of the constitutional initiatives, one of 13 that are on the ballot. There's a billionaire from California that it, that is financing this campaign. They announced last week they're buy, they have bought, not reserved like the Democrats with Bill Nelson, they've purchased $18 million in television time in the fall. You know, if you got the top of the ballot, like Bill Nelson, Rick Scott, um, and then the, the national groups, and then you've got the governor's race, you know, each coming in for $100 million, $200 million, there's only so much inventory that you can buy, especially, you know, one of the great secrets about cable uh, television buys is that it has to be sold at the lowest rate over the last 12 months. So if you add in Marcy's Law, and then you add in some of these other initiatives, like the gambling initiative, um, the, the charter school initiative, the Greyhound initiative, it's gonna be very difficult for down ballot candidates, candidates that are not running statewide, candidates running for Congress or uh, the state legislature, for them to get on the air. Um, eventually, a lot of uh, local television stations will, they'll cut it off. They'll say, hey, we're not selling below Congress. We're not selling below state Senate. So people running for judge, et cetera, they've got $25,000, $50,000. They're not gonna be able to get on the TV. It's really going to impact some of the down ballot races and some of these ultra competitive state legislative races like in Tampa Bay, uh, our neck of the woods, you know, where they, they could spend, they'd want to spend a million or $2 million. They're not gonna be able to get on Fox News. They're not gonna be able to get on MSNBC. They're not gonna get to, you know, you always wonder who's watching A&E. Well, it's, um, it's, it's the 55 year old female voter that Democrats wanna turn out. Um, and it's, it, the inventory is 
quickly moving away. So it'll be very, one of the interesting stories uh, going into the fall is what kind of inventory is left for them to buy. Well, so let's let's talk about that. So so we know about traditional ad buys, but but you and I also work in the world of digital and social media sure. and and the ability to geotarget, geofence your your buys through Twitter, Facebook. You know, that that those are that, that's kind of the pennies that could make the difference in in the campaign. You know, I mean how much are you seeing candidates just totally embracing that concept of, of, of social. Well, as somebody you know who sells ads on a digital site, it's amazing to me. I mean, I've got three. I've got three asks in this morning for people. You know, do you have inventory on our site? We're you know the the internet is not <laughs> infinite. I mean, people think that you can just uh, buy as much as you can on there, but eventually we actually run out. The other sites run out. Yeah. Um, gosh, Adam Putnam has been. You know, you can't go on. Um, Overstock.com and not find an Adam Putnam ad, um, and so it's going to be interesting. Uh, you know, will a Jeff Green or will a Phil Levine, somebody with a little bit more money uh, and a little bit less experience running statewide, but maybe has a national media buyer, will they come up with kind of a silver bullet uh, on the digital to cut through? We haven't seen the the first like viral ad yet in the Florida election cycle, right. so it'll be interesting to see if somebody. You know, eventually, eventually people start tuning it out. October, November, you know, it's just one bad black and white attack ad after another. It will be interesting to see if somebody, and it'll probably happen at the down ballot level, and yeah. kind of, you'll be like, hey, have you seen Neil Combe's ad in uh, Congressional District 15 in in Polk? Um, that'll be that's one of the, that's the best part of this job is yeah. finding somebody. I can tell you what's interesting right now. I start to see it build up. I was telling you about a fun story. Uh, down out of Sarasota that we broke. Vern Buchanan is a U.S. rep, very wealthy. He ended up buying a yacht on the day he passed the GOP tax cuts. And uh, it was a story that we got an oppo file on and we built it out. I guarantee you, you will see that ad or you'll see that issue in an ad in Sarasota within the next couple of weeks. You'll have you know, uh, Vern Buchanan's face, you know, and some funny name on the back of some yacht, and right. somebody will have some fun on that. We're starting to see that right now where the campaigns are pitching us stories right. because I know in September, October, they want to have the, the hit pieces. See, see, the counter to that, though, is you run all the businesses that work for the, the boat maker. Uh, and, you know, that's yeah. a small business helping, you know, sort of thing. So, you know, we'll see. We'll I'm yeah. glad that you're pro-yacht. You know, I'm, 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 I'm a huge fan. Anyone you're, have one, <laughs> feel right. free to give you're me a buzz. Pro. All right, so so as as we kind of wrap up this episode, what do you see next? What's the biggest thing viewers and folks in the process are going to look for next um, as as a benchmark for something big to happen in uh, in the campaign? Well, two things I'd say: it's when we get to the end of the month, the early voting uh, ballots go out. You know, Florida is a state that really buys into uh, voting by mail and voting early, thirty five days out from the yeah. primary and general elections. That's key. That's election day, not the traditional right. election day. So let's see how quickly those ballots get turned back in, or are people holding on to them for, I think this is the big decider in the governor's race. When, if and when does Donald Trump come and campaign for Ron DeSantis? Right. If he sets up shop in Jacksonville or at the Florida State Fairgrounds, I really think it's over for Adam Putnam. If he only does a robocall and maybe another tweet, I think Putnam is still in the game. But if if the president makes DeSantis a project and he has called Ron DeSantis one of his four warriors, um, I, I, I really don't know if there's an answer for Putnam out of that. They, did, they don't have a lot of debates. Um, they'll probably be at near parity on television at that point. So the big thing is look for that Make America Great rally to happen. If it doesn't happen, I think the governor's race still uh, remains right. competitive. Well, well, let's go back to 2016, right? And I remember you and I having a conversation. You said, look, if it, if it doesn't go the way the polls say, the model's broken, are you seeing any clue that in this election, meaning the model's broken on, do the polls really tell the story? I mean, have you seen any clues that it's going to be a different scenario today? I mean, certainly the Trump factor in that election just changed the math on everything. Any of any truth to that in an off-cycle, you know, gubernatorial race? Uh, there's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit too much velocity in some of the up ballot polling right now. Um, Ron DeSantis had an internal poll that showed him up 19 points, um, and a second poll from an outside group had him up by 17 points. Putnam had been leading this race by 10 or 15 points. Even even DeSantis people before the debate acknowledged that. So if you're saying that a, the president's tweet can move 
the GOP primary, 27 points. Um, man, that's Zeus throwing down a lightning bolt. I don't know if that's true yet. I still, you know, we look at the top of the ballot, and if you look historically at Florida races, they, you know, Rick Scott won by 60,000 votes against Alex Inc. He barely beat Charlie Crist. The idea that one of those two people is going to be up five or six points over the other, mm -hmm. and that's what some of these polls have shown is Rick Scott up by six or seven, and you're just like, man, that just doesn't jive with the historical trends uh, of Florida. A third part, and it's by one of my favorite reporters in Florida, Mark Caputo. Um, he's really been tracking. Dixon just did a backflip. <laughs> he's really been tracking uh, Puerto Rican su voter support mm -hmm. for Rick Scott. Bill, there are there is some polling that just shows that Rick Scott is doing better with Puerto Ricans than Bill Nelson, and that's a traditional constituency of the Democrats. Let me just say, if Bill Nelson loses the Puerto Rican vote to Rick Scott, he's done. I mean, there's okay. not even. And so we've seen two polls out where. And Rick Scott has worked it. I mean, he's been down there. He's been doing that stuff. I think he, um, you know, the next time I'm on in the, the December show and we get to wrap it up, we're going to probably have to talk about how Rick Scott may have been the best candidate that we've seen with these three campaigns that he's run since 2010, 14, and 18. Well, Peter, we will stay tuned to Sunburn, FloridaPolitics.com, every other of the, the, the multitude of publications you. that you push out. Um, we're grateful for your partnership, and thanks for coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me. For sure. That's all the time we have for today's show on Phi TV. Hit us up on Facebook or on our Twitter feeds. And for now, thanks for tuning in.